I can't stop thinking about religion, and um, I don't think anybody else can either. It seems to be at the center of um, all of the uh, the talk, all of the uh, communique, the uh, the media, the um, scientific um, culture. It all seems to be focusing on religion. Um, some scientists uh, want to approach it as nothing more than any other natural phenomenon and study it like they study the mating patterns of bonobo chimpanzees. But the problem with that is before we can naturalize religion, we have to be able to naturalize human psychology. And um, what that means is we have to take meaning out of it, value and, and sympathies and imaginary uh, responses to it, and just look at the bare truth, the straight facts without any um, added mystery or magic or super nature. Just look at what's there without human significance. And uh, for biology, for physics, for um, mathematics, these sciences, you can certainly remove most of your human um, biases, your human emotions, your um, sense of, of meaning and purpose and understanding, um, the understanding of your place in the world. You can separate all that from, you know, equations and, um, you know, objective measurements of the material world. Um, and see, biology gets tricky because they're jumping into this new realm where there's so much added complexity that um, you're always, in a sense, at a loss as to how to fully explain it. Because theoretically, um, physics or biology should reduce to physics. There should be a clear causal chain between the physical world and the biological world. In other words, we should know exactly how life came about um, on Earth, how organisms, organization, um, metabolism, uh, cognitive behaviors came about um, with nothing but mud and water and electricity from the sky. It certainly happened. That much we know. But how the mechanism underlying it seems to be lost. So biology is tricky territory. To remove telos from biology takes, um, you know, a pretty significant balancing act. That um, you know you can read Richard Dawkins and um, uh, Daniel Dennett, and you can get a sense that we're almost there. That cognitive science is almost ready to reduce psychology. To biology, which that's really the first step before the biology can be reduced to physics, um, because we're trying to tie the world together by sort of tying these irreducible gaps together um, down towards the material world. You know, the cognitive activity, the psychological activity, is nothing but a um, complex form of random. Uh, collisions between a, a, uh, a group of neurons that um, react with one another and with, you know, we call it information from the physical world. But that, that, that gap, though, between our perception and the physical world, we don't fully understand how that occurs. Um, you know, quantum physics is certainly showing us from showing that the, us that same thing from the other end, um, trying to measure the material world, we're finding, well, the state of the observer, I mean, even in Einstein's theory before quantum physics, the state of the observer has everything to do with what you're going to observe, at least for everything but the speed of light. And in quantum physics, measurements seem to be so intimately related at this, you know, 
a quantum level of reality with um, what we observe, the measured seems to immediately um, correspond to, I don't want to say uh, be caused by the observer, there's just this relationship that's irreducible and you can't really place um, the causal uh, power to either side. You're, you can't say that the observer creates the observed and you can't say that the observed creates the observer, which is at least what I'm trying to argue, that we really haven't logically mapped um, the reduction from psychology to biology. We haven't been able to wipe meaning away from our own cognitive experience. That's what it would take to have a science um, in the traditional way we understand the term as you know, a reductionistic um, mechanical understanding of how the parts uh, work together. Um, we've had many attempts, but they haven't been um, proven, and that's the thing, they're theories, and immediately whenever you talk about a theory, you're, diversing, divor uh, you're divorcing yourself from your actual experience of life, of the actual psychological data of your experience, and by definition, I think, psychological data is always going to be meaningful data. In other words, you can't wipe value away from it. It's inherently, um, it inherently provokes a response from you, from the depth of your person. Um, you can't come up with a solution to, to psychological problems by thinking a lot about them, um, you know, abstractly, using language symbols, which is, you know, that becomes the basic quanta of mind if you're a, any kind of a Chomskyan or a computationalist cognitive philosopher or scientist. Um, the basic data of the mind are words, but words are really neural correlates, and if you map the words to the correlates, you've effectively transferred um, the uh, causal powers to a lower, more primordial level of reality and turn the, the level of actual psychological experience, of the experience of knowing what a word means, of, um, you know, it's easy to refer to sense experiences when we talk about the smell of cinnamon, you can immediately smell it. And so that word does carry a, a real experience. And so do colors. The word blue, when we say the word, we see the color. So what is the seeing of the color? And why can't it be reduced to the neural experience in the occipital lobe of um, just these neural patterns firing? reflecting off the objective represented world. Um, well, because, you know, we can certainly map it out that way. But we're still having a psychological experience that's... Um, it forces us, I guess, to acknowledge something spiritual. And so... Back to religion. Uh, it took me ten minutes to actually talk about what I wanted to talk about. Because we can't reduce psychology to biology. Because we can't reduce biology to physics. We can't stop talking about religion. And everybody today is still talking about religion. Whether you're trying to reduce it to something else. Or you're trying to elevate it to the soul meaningful realm of human experience. Um, and so when, if we're going to elevate it to being the pinnacle of, of all human aspiration, um, if the whole game of being human is learning to know God and 
see God is it a concept um, probably yeah the word the God word is a concept it stands for something that we experience and we're all still experiencing it so whatever it is that we're experiencing when we talk about this word God it exists for us as psychological entities as entities that um, are inherently surprised by what they see and they couldn't possibly know everything that's going to happen unless they were God in which case you know it all ends in the same basic uh, basic idea that we're all related to God in some way.